Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge of Love of Christ Lutheran Church in Mesa, Arizona. Each week, Pastor Nanette Christofferson and I seek to provide a brief introduction to two of the upcoming Sunday Bible readings. In this lesson, we're going to look at the Gospel for Sunday, May 14th, 2023, a continuation of looking at uh, John 14. We'll look at verses 15 to 21. Uh, just a little brief review. Uh, looking at the Gospel of John, uh, we can break it up into three sections. Uh, the first part is the prologue, the, the emphasis that Jesus is the Son of God, the, 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 the Word of God uh, in the flesh dwelling among us, and that uh, Jesus uh, Christ is the light of the world, that the darkness of sin, death, and, uh, and the devil cannot destroy. Uh, after we go from verse 18, we move into verses nine, verse 19 through chapter 12, 50. And uh, those are all the signs of God in Jesus at work in the world. So it's an opportunity to see uh, the inbreaking uh, and demonstration of God's power at work in and through Jesus. The last part, which our lesson is a part of, is a lengthy look at uh, Monday Thursday, that last meal of Jesus with his disciples in the upper room. And that starts in chapter 13 and then runs through uh, the story of Good Friday and the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus in the last chapter of, uh, of John's Gospel, chapter 21. Just leading into uh, chapter 14, we have the great story and example illustration of servant leadership with Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. He foretells the group of his closest uh, followers, students, that uh, there's one among them who is going to betray him. And then he gives them that new commandment that we emphasize on Monday, Thursday, each Holy Week, to love one another as I have loved you. And that love is physically demonstrated by the foot washing. It'll be physically demonstrated by Jesus giving his life up for the sake of the world for all uh, of those whom God loves. And then uh, it concludes with the foretelling of Peter's denial three times and, um, and the whole build up to uh, Jesus being forgiven and, uh, and set free to be a great leader. Uh, in the early movement of the church. We listened and learned from Pastor Nanette uh, last week. Uh, our gospel reading uh, from John 14 uh, begins with an emphasis that Jesus is the way to the Father. Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure and return to the Father. He offers assurance, though, of his disciples, of his followers being reunited and dwelling together. And so we get this image of uh, going to a place of dwelling places in heaven, heavenly mansions. Uh, a lot of folks, um, you know, as they prepare for their funeral services, have selected this passage to be part of it because it's, it's a hope-filled passage that Jesus, um, Jesus is able to transcend the finiteness of our lives and offer and open up the infiniteness of eternal life, of being in the presence of God forever. What this is going to look like, we have to be very careful because none of us uh, has seen or known, only Jesus. Then uh, the latter part of that, uh, that, that lesson uh, is uh, John 14, 8 to 14, where uh, Jesus emphasizes, I must go. He, he emphasizes, I got to leave you in order to prepare the place for you. And uh, also, it's really time for the handoff, for you to take over the mission of, uh, of God's love for the world. And he even says in verse 12 that you're going to do greater works than I. Now you're thinking, wow, what, what's this about? So I put a little note here that in and through Jesus, we see and come to know God. In and through Jesus, you and I are able to continue to carry out the works of Jesus for the sake of God's mission of love for this world. Any work of love, compassion, forgiveness, and mercy we do is a fitting response to what God has already done for us. 
And as good Lutherans, I emphasize this last sentence. It is never a means to gaining what has already been given by God. Because everything we do is in response to what God has first done or acted. So, uh, I think just as a little illustration of this, you have to remember the early Christian movement began with Jesus. Then he called 12. And then there may have been a gathering of 120 people who would say they were followers of Jesus. And then there was great persecution. Uh, but the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost came upon these followers. And what did we see? We saw thousands of people coming to know Jesus and believe in Jesus, even when it was risky, dangerous, and, uh, and it might uh, cost all sorts of hardship in their lives. And then that movement spread further and further and further to the point where today, two billion people are believed to be Christians on this planet Earth. So greater works have happened under uh, the movement of the Spirit through the disciples of Jesus, and greater works continue to happen. And the reality is those greater works happen through people like you and me. So, we get to our section of the gospel for this week, and that is the promise of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus has already said, I got to go and prepare a place. You're going to go and do greater works. The how question is always going to be there. And that how question is going to be by the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We listen in uh, verses uh, 15 to 17. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. So Jesus promises, as he prepares to transition to be with God the Father, that he is going to give them an advocate. He's going to give them a paraclete. And that paraclete is one who is called alongside another. It can also mean a helper, comforter, encourager, or intercessor. And in some translations of the Bible, that's what you'll see and read. Uh, but Jesus starts this little section on, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. We already know the ultimate commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. And then that love we know from the other Gospels is going to also include love your neighbor as you love yourself. But the ability to do that is given by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. And as that Spirit dwells in us, we are going to know the truth. And we're going to find help. We're going to get comfort. We're going to be encouraged. And we're going to know that God is with us forever. So, how have you or do you experience the Holy Spirit in your life? What words would you use to describe the Holy Spirit in your experience, given what we've just read and heard in verses 15 to 17? In Lutheran tradition, we believe when you are baptized that the Holy Spirit comes to us. We've been sealed by the promise of the Holy Spirit, and it's the Holy Spirit that gives us faith, that calls us, that guides us, that enlightens us, that is able to guide us in every good work. So think about your own personal experience of the Holy Spirit. Moving on to verse 18, and I love this little verse. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. We don't know how all this works with Jesus ascending into heaven and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and God being present in our midst, how this actually works. It's a mystery. But there's a promise here from Jesus that whatever our circumstances Whatever our experiences, wherever we might find ourselves in good times or not so good times, fearful or not, Jesus promises, 
I will not leave you orphaned. What a word to these disciples who are going to find themselves scattered out of Jerusalem because of Jewish persecution and later Roman persecution. Jesus says, I'm not going to leave you. And I'm going to, I am coming to you. And again, in our tradition of word and sacrament, we believe Jesus comes to us in the promise of God's word. We believe that Jesus comes to us in the promise of the sacrament of the holy baptism and, and in the bread and the wine. Jesus is present with us so that we aren't orphaned. And Paul will teach later that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit so that we are assured that God is with us always and forever. So we don't have to ever doubt that we're without a heavenly parent because we are God's child. Then we look at verses 19 to 20. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Again, these are interesting words, difficult words to fully understand. But this, this interaction, interconnectedness that takes place here. He said, in a little while, the world will no longer see me. They're going to think Jesus is dead, gone, buried. But then he says, you will see me because I live. You also will live. The resurrection will assure his followers. And the appearance of Jesus to his followers is going to assure them that death doesn't carry the final word. And then on that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. We have the full power and presence of God who is able to overcome sin, death, and the devil once and for all, through Jesus. But I leave with a question. What do these two verses require of us? What do these two verses require of us? And then our last verse. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. So our final question is, when or where will we see Jesus? Jesus makes it pretty clear in verse 21, where he reveals himself. Well, have fun with these words of Jesus. Try to find yourself in the story that's being unfolded here. This is pre-Good Friday. It's still upper room conversation with the disciples, but I hope that you hear good news, that you hear the ultimate assurance of Jesus' concern for his followers, his teaching that is coming at the latter part, at the near end of his life, earthly life as he know it, as we know it, and the assurance that the Holy Spirit is there always for each and every one of us. God bless. Take care.